Netflix and a comedy special sticking, I guess, with music in some way. Uh, Bo Burnham dropping his first comedy special in uh, five his years. First ever recorded, like recorded one like this, though. Uh, I think he had two for Netflix, and a few others were more of the comedy album variety. He's had a lot at this point. Yeah. I, I, I didn't actually realize how long he had been famous. He was a YouTuber as a teenager. Yeah. To late 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 two thousands was when he really like started to gain a lot of popularity. Obviously, style is uh, musical comedy, um, but you know, mixing in stand up and observation in there, obviously, and um, you know, inside the new special, um, it comes at an interesting time for him. He's been delving a lot more into serious acting. You know, obviously, we saw him in uh, Promising Young Woman. Mm-hmm. We uh, were fans of eighth grade, even though it was incredibly cringe, as the right. uh, kids would say. And um, he was also recently cast as Larry Bird in the upcoming HBO yeah. Showtime Lakers show. So that sounds okay. cool. Can't wait. Yeah. Um, and he, he's actually a really good casting. He's super tall and he's yeah. got that like look for Larry Bird. So great casting there. And we've also consumed some of his directing of uh, comedy specials. That's we right. talked about Tambourine from Chris Rock. I don't know if we talked about Drad Carmichael's Eight, but I know we. I, like, I, I like that it. special a lot, though. Yeah, yeah, it's a great Drad, Drad Carmichael, and, very underrated. And, and Bo's camera, I believe that was the first one he did. His camera actually kind of stands out. He kind of like loops around yeah. Gerard the whole time. Yeah, yeah, that that's kind of like again, like we don't talk about a whole lot of stand up, but like when someone has elevated, branched out, blossomed beyond strictly the stand up world, such as Bo Burnham has for several years at this point gets my attention for when the stand-up special does come back around so here we are and yeah. definitely unique right given that mm-hmm. the, the the obvious stuff of it all written edited uh written, shot acted produced solely by him in um, one room over the course of a few months in his home in los angeles uh at the end of the day, that uh speaks for itself right it's a product of quarantine um i think actually i think this probably would have been probably would have hit even i think a bigger deal if this had managed to come out at some point in 2020 obviously this is a very tough uh thing to pull off watching him in the beginning like working on his lighting and stuff i'm like i feel you there man i know exactly (laughs) what that's like trying to adequately light oneself in a fucking bedroom (laughs) it's right Uh, um but yeah here it is came out uh last uh sunday yeah and you know for me i think watching this and not being the you know, a huge Bo Burnham fan, I would say. I, I'm aware of some of his like earlier stuff, but not like to a, a point where I'm, I would call myself a fan. I was pretty blown away by this. Um, not only because I think some of the songs are really poignant um, in different ways um, and obviously speak to a whole myriad of issues that we're all currently dealing with, but I think. Uh, the way that this comedy special seemed to like transcend a bit of what you would come to expect of a comedy special. And um, it felt a lot more cinematic, obviously. Um, And just to do what he did with the little that he had, you know, like you said, just recording at home, doing his own stuff. uh, Really impressive. How did you feel about it? Yeah. That's what's to, I think should stand out to everyone. It's just, it comes across as formless there's a lot of editing there's a lot of cutting right it's not just uh, multiple shots of a guy holding a woman holding a mic on a stage it's Mm -hmm. therefore i think more visually interesting like the lighting a lot of stark bright neon lighting changes shadows non shadows you know all kinds of cool stuff like that but at the end of the day it kind of borders on like sketch right like some of the the more memorable bits like the one where he's being like a, a twitch uh streamer mm-hmm. uh and then also acting out the uh action of the game he's streaming yep. right like that's something that is so so a, a different from anything you get from a comedy special right that's obviously much more aligned with something like saturday night live so mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I think that's the coolest thing is even if it's like not like not every joke is like amazing and like the the ambition and, and the uniqueness of inside i think is what will make it stand the test of time when it comes to comedy specials it's not the funniest thing you ever saw 
Yeah, and you know when when this came out, uh, pretty quickly I started seeing like clips and screen grabs from this all over. I, the Saki bit obviously was getting a lot of attention. I think not only because it's a uh, a really well thought out and I think a really smart you know critique of <laughs> the uh, the way history is told and hmm. um, you know framed to people, and then also like the uh, I think the difficulty people have in breaking those cycles of how we talk about and reflect on history. Um, but I, I think it's also one of those things that is a little more, a little more easy to post and people get it when you just have a screen grab of Bo Burnham with a sock rather than, you know, him lying on his floor, like my background is, or like you're showing like this visual right. of him as a silhouette. It's, it's very artistic in at, at times, but um, I guess I wanted to ask, like, what bits or what songs stood out to you the most? Yeah, so I like the sock one. That one was really cool. I like the Twitch one, just I yeah. think visually really cool, right? Just uh, <laughs> seeing him act out like a um, a uh, narrative uh, adventure um, storytelling game. Really funny. Um, yeah. Similarly, the the reactions video, like the YouTuber bit, where he's yeah. reacting to himself, reacting to himself, reacting. Mm-hmm. Like that was awesome. Um, I also liked the one about sexting. Uh, oh, it's not sex. It's the next best thing. Yeah, the, 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 specifically the focus on emojis. Thought that was really funny. Yeah. Um, similar to the hand puppet one, you had the bit about like woke brands, like companies mm-hmm. that feel the need to uh, align with a cause. Uh, even though, again, it's it's more of a sketch than strictly a joke. It still has that kind of observational humor and point of view that you'd expect from like smart stand-up so that those, i think those are the, my favorite ones i forget what it was i'd have to rewatch it but there was one of the earlier tunes towards the beginning of the special and the, the melody reminded me a lot of like lin-manuel miranda hamilton kind mm. of stuff like and i was like oh this is this feels inspired to me and yeah like i know he's done music music's a big part of his 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 comedy uh to this point but I actually think it was really smart to use it as kind of the driving force for so much of inside because again he had so little other thing other options right beyond just literally recording himself telling jokes directly looking into the lens you know yeah no for sure um I, I think not only those skits that you highlighted um stood out to me I think the sexting one was probably the one that made me laugh the most mm-hmm. but I think the skits that were really like uh vulnerable you know like he he talks pretty openly about having anxiety some of his mental health struggles uh the way the pandemic has been impacting him um you know i thought the uh facetiming with mom one was pretty memorable and something that probably a lot of people relate to over the last year um i really enjoyed uh the song all eyes on me i thought that was a interesting like second half tune and Mm -hmm. um then, then the one where he was talking about the internet, I thought also was one that probably is going to get a lot of attention. People are going to really take to. Um, yeah, the, the thing is, like, I, I kind of go through it, and there's not a lot of moments where I was like, "Oh, that was bad." Like, I think there's some things I liked more or less, but um, overall, really, really impressed with this. You know, one thing I did see was a bit of a debate online about like the ending and what it really meant. Like, how did you interpret? like the very end of the special oh right? i don't like, know i don't know to yeah, be yeah. honest I, I didn't realize that was a hotly contested thing but um at the end of the day there's a lot of transitions throughout this special it's it's quite formless and i think actually that's one of the benefits of even if you don't like a certain bit or joke as much as the next one it's mm-hmm. always still pretty visually interesting or at least visually different than something you had recently watched already and within the special so it always keeps your attention and yeah, like the ending, like, I don't know, it's up for interpretation, I guess. Yeah, it was mostly people just, you know, interpreting it all differently. And I thought, I thought that was a nice part of it. You know, he finally gets to like leave the house and then immediately wants to get back in and can't and just say, you know, makes you think. So uh, not your typical stand up special. And I think that's why we both would recommend checking out Inside Out.